So welcome everybody to this session. In this session, we will just do some problems, complex problems in dynamics. This is just in my attempt to help you understand how to apply Newton's laws of motion. Please feel free to ask questions. We will interact in class. You will use the whiteboards as well as the ideal pin board um, to do the problems that I'm going to assign. Please work in groups of three, just as usual. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we have two blocks, M1 and M2. Um, M1 is equal to M and the M2 is equal to 2m. M1 moves on a surface on a horizontal table. Now the table is smooth and it is connected to M2 via a string. Now the question is when the system is released from rest we need to derive expressions for one the acceleration of block one now let me say block two two the tension in the string the tension in the string now the very first thing we whenever you're given a problem like this is to draw a free body diagram but before I do that look up please we will draw the forces on the diagram here this is M1 G that is T M2 G that is T and that is T observe something let's say the block starts moving the distance from here to here let's call it D when the block is released from rest let us assume that the mass moves a certain distance remember the distance from here to here is D when the block is released from rest the mass is at a certain distance X from the origin this is where x is equal to 0. You will also agree with me that this distance from here to here is always constant. Let us call it b. Now, um, if that is the case, then the distance from here to here, let us call it y. And you recognize that there are two of them. This distance from here and this distance up, right? Now the length of the string itself is constant. And uh, if that is the case, you will see that L is equal to D minus X plus 2Y plus B. I'm recording, so don't worry. I will send you the video. Just request for it, all right? Mm -hmm. um, in other words, we have L equal to D minus X plus 2Y plus B, which means that the change in L is equal to the change in D minus the change in X plus 2 the change in Y plus the change in B. L is constant, so that is 0. D is constant, so this is 0. B is constant, so this is 0. This definitely tells us that the change in X is equal to 2 times the change in Y. If we divide both sides by T, this would mean that V of mass 1 is equal to 2 times the V of mass 2 and uh, if we divide both sides again by t you will see that a of mass 1 is equal to 2 multiplied by the a of mass 2 
This is the algebraic way to determine the relationship between blocks with multiple strings. But I'm going to give you a conceptual way that is easier than what we have just done. So what is this telling us? It means that the acceleration of block 1 is twice the acceleration of what? Block 2. In other words, the acceleration of block 2 is half the acceleration of what? Block 1. Please look up. I'm going to erase these forces. I don't want it overcrowded. Observe that the string itself is constant. Which means that if this block moves a distance of 1 meter, that, that 1 meter will be divided equally on this string and on this string, right? Which means that this string will extend downwards by half a meter and this other side will extend downwards by what? Half a meter. So that if this block moves a distance of one meter, this block will move a distance of what? Half a meter. As a result, the acceleration of this block is half the acceleration of what? This block. Do you understand that? So as a rule of thumb, the block that is connected to two strings have the what has half the acceleration of the block that is connected to just one string. In this particular case where there is a moving pulley and there is a fixed pulley. So um, if that is the case, we will apply Newton's second law of motion. Keep in mind, so if we say that late the acceleration of block 1 BA, then the acceleration of block 2 will be what? 2a. Also, we will take the direction of motion to be positive. We will take the direction of motion to be positive. And if we do that, we are now free to apply Newton's second law, the sum of all external forces, is equal to ma and we will apply this separately to block 1 and block 2 not co we should not combine both it brings confusion so if we take block 1 m1 we will have t equal to m1a which implies that t is equal to what ma let us call this equation 1 if we take block 2 look up everybody C block 2, there are how many tensions here? Two. 2. This is T, this is T. So we will have here M2G minus 2T equal to what? M2, 2A. Don't forget, the acceleration of block 2 is twice the acceleration of block 1. This means that um, <coughs> this implies that 2 mg minus 2t will be equal to 2ma. This is equation 2. Um, nope, 4ma. Do you see why it's 4? So this means that mg minus t will be equal to what? <coughs> 2ma. Let us call this equation 2. If you now write Equation 1 says that T is equal to MA. Equation 2 says that MG minus T should be equal to 2MA. Wait, look at it carefully. If you just add these two equations, the T cancels out, right? So let's... So this means that T will be equal to 3MA. And therefore, the acceleration will be what? 1 third G. This is the acceleration of block 1. Therefore, the acceleration of block 2 will be 2 thirds of G. Therefore, the tension in the string T, which is just MA, will be equal to 2 over 3 M sub G. Yes, please? You mean where? Uh-huh. That's 1, right? Yeah. So, 
root d. m1 is equal to m and m2 is equal to 2m. So we have here t will be equal to m1a and m1 is just m. Yeah, this is the acceleration of block 1. And this is the acceleration of block 2. You mean here or here? Oh, so the one this is the acceleration of block 1. Yeah, and then, and then in your box, the t equal mA. This one, okay, this one? Yeah, yeah, that one. So uh, m is equal to m. Mm -hmm. Then a should be 1 third g. Yes. Thank so, you. Okay. Thank you. You are correct. I was like confused. Yeah, you are correct. That's why I love this class. You guys pay attention. Seriously, I do. So the question is, you have two blocks, block one of mass 3m, of mass 3m. Is there no gravity in this question? There is gravity actually block two of mass m. Now the question is to <coughs> find the minimum value of f such that, such that block two does not sleep. You know, if you push F hard enough, it will accelerate in such a way that block 2 will stay stationary where it is, right? And the question is to calculate that minimum value. Yes, please? Is it like a truck moving so fast that I put a tank exactly. in the trunk? If a car is moving so fast and, you know, something flies and sticks on the bonnet, it stays there for a while until it slows down and then it falls off, right? That's the same scenario. Just that we are using blocks here. I could use capital M, but mm, let me, let's just say it's 3M. Now look up, fellas. The very first thing is to do a draw a free body diagram for the objects. I'm going to isolate the bodies. The, the ground is smooth. So for this, for the bigger object, the free body diagram will look like, let me actually just do this. This is the first diagram. This is F, 3MG. This is N on block one by the earth. You have <coughs> here, this is FS, static friction due to block 2. And you have here the normal force N on block 1 by block 2. So those are the forces acting on block 1. On block 2, the little guy, we have, this is MG, N1, 2. N one two. Resplendent. Here's a flamboyant question. Now, what? Remember, N one two is the normal. Oh, reaction force. Yeah, force on one by what? By two, and this is N two one. Where is it two one? This is N21 and this is N12. Wait, what? Um, isn't it? I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> Wait, isn't it? N21 means. N21 is equal to normal. What? It's like normal force on 2 by 1. Yeah. On 2 by. Oh, yeah, it's the reverse. Sorry. You nettle me. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, Where's the normal force? Can you say that again, please? Uh, I, I think you forgot. Like, uh, no, I haven't forgotten any force. 
Let's do this again so you should understand. We have drawing the free body diagram for block one. Please pay attention. This is 3 mg. The normal force on one by two. F. This is the normal force on one by the earth. This is Fs, the friction force on block one by block two. Now let's do the free body diagram for block two. We have Mg, the normal force on two by one, the static friction force on two by one. Looking at these free body diagrams, I'm going to start here. You will see that for block one, sorry, block two, the summation of y equal to zero, implying that fs21 is equal to y at mg. But we know by definition that fs21 is just mu s n21. Therefore, Yep, we are correct. But keep in mind that if you look at this diagram, if you look at this diagram, you see that the only force acting forward on block 2 is the normal force N21, which means that by Newton's third law, N21 is equal to what? MA. Therefore, Fs21 is equal to mu s ma, and all of this is equal to what? Mg's. The m cancel, and the acceleration a is given by g all divided by mu s. This is the acceleration of the system. Yes, please. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface exerting it. Always perpendicular to the surface exerting it. Yes, yeah, equal to remember the only force providing the forward acceleration for block 2 is N21. That's why it's equal to MA, Newton's second law of motion. Alright, now let's come back to block 2. Block 2, you will recognize that F minus N12 is equal to what? 3MA, which is the same as 3MG divided by what? Mu S. But what do we know? We know that from Newton's third law, we know that N12 is equal to N21. And all of this should be equal to what? MA, which is just going to be equal to MG divided by mu S. As a result, you have F minus MG divided by mu S equal to 3 MG divided by mu S, which means that F will be equal to what? 4 MG divided by mu S. That is the force F required to push block 1 such that the two blocks accelerate as a unit. Next example. Thank you. I like the jacket too. No, no, just call me Mr. Jam or DJ. Where'd you pick your cotton? Pardon? Where'd you, where'd you pick your cotton? Like, My wife bought it for me. Yes. Yeah, she has a good eye. Um, I love that girl. Someday you'll get to meet a girl like her who will love you too. So don't worry. If you have not met her already. If forces come to make air, then people also come. Of course, people come in pair. 
look up everybody the next example I love this example we've done something similar All right, the question is the system the system is released from rest and uh, this is block 1 block 2 and this is block 3 and the block 1 and 2 accelerates as one block part 1 of the question is to determine the acceleration of block 3 and part 2 of the question is to determine the coefficient of static friction between block 1 and 2 or to determine the minimum coefficient of friction between block 1 and 2 such that they do not slide such that they do not slide so the system is released from rest and the two blocks accelerate in such a way that block 1 remains stationary on block 2 now we need to determine the acceleration of block 3 now observe something the system is constrained to move by what? this string and when a system is coupled as such, they move with a single acceleration. Just as usual, um, whenever you're given a problem like this, you start first by doing what? Drawing a free body diagram. So let's start by looking at the free body diagram for log one. We have here MG. This is the normal force on 1 by 2 and the static friction force is acting forward. Now let's look at block 2. This will be 2 mg. This is the normal force on 2 by the table surface. There will be a normal force here on 2 by 1. There is tension and there will be a friction force. This is one, there will be a friction force here, static friction on two by one. <coughs> if you look at now block three, the free body diagram will look like this is three mg and that is T. So this is block one block 2 block 3 now if you really look at the system <coughs> this is 3m recognize that block 1 and block 2 move off as one body right so it could be replaced by one block of mass 3m and if we do that the free body diagram will bar down to 3 mg 3 mg T T N and if we apply Newton's second law keep it in mind that the direction of motion is positive then you will see that for block one you have t equal to 3 ma for block two you have 3 mg minus t equal to what 3 ma and look at what again if you add the two equations the t's will go do what cancel and by the way they should cancel isn't it isn't that true why do you think so? Third law. Newton's third law. Who can explain why? Internal they are internal forces. And by Newton's third law, they should 
cancel out. So we now have here 3mg equal to what? 6ma and therefore the acceleration of the system is going to be um, 3 over 6 which is like 1 over 2g. So we have determined the acceleration of the system to be half g. 3a plus 3a will give you 6a, right? Alright, um, let's come back here and take a look at block 1. We have fs12 is going to be equal to what? mu s n12 which is going to be equal to mu s mg but we recognize that for block one the only force forward is fs therefore by newton's second law fs provides the what the net force required to accelerate block one this means that ma is equal to mu s mg the m's can do what cancel and therefore a is equal to mu s g hmm simple if a is equal to mu s g and a remember a is mu s g which is equal to half of what g the g can cancel and the coefficient of a static friction is just half so that is the minimum coefficient of static friction to prevent block one from sliding on block two all right everybody do this this is actually problem 32 of your practice exam so the question says block one is stacked on top of block two and block two is connected by a light cord to block three which is pulled along a frictionless surface by a force f as shown in the diagram on the board block one accelerates at the same rate as block two because of the frictional forces between the two blocks if all three blocks have the same mass m what is the minimum coefficient of static friction between block one and uh, block two please get to work that's problem 32 of your practice exam you can pull it up everybody start doing it everybody start by drawing the free body diagram for the three blocks the question is calculate the minimum value for the coefficient of static friction between block one and block two please when you are ready voting for the answers remember the table is frictionless so with regards to block 3 we have F minus T equal to what? equal to MA with regards to block 2 remember that the free body diagram for 2 you have here Fs Mg N 1 2 so this would mean that Fs is equal to Ma which is mu Mg so the acceleration A is mu sg now regarding block 2 you will have t minus you have t equal to 2ma which is 2 mg mu if you put it back in there you will have f minus 2 mg mu equal to mg mu if you take it over you will have f equal to 3 mg 
mu s, which means that mu s is equal to 3 all divided by what? f, which is d. <laughs> good. You have good instincts. Now, look up everybody. So the question is to determine the minimum value f can have such that when the system accelerates, the block will not slide down the inclined plane. Determine the minimum value of f such that when the block accelerates, the system will not slide down the inclined plane. Now, you first of all, start with draw your free body diagram this is mg and this is n you can do this this angle here is theta so we can resolve n into two components this is n sine theta and this is n cosine theta so with regards to the little guy, you have n sine theta equal to what? Ma. And you have n cosine theta equal to mg. Which means that if you divide both sides, you will recognize that a over g is equal to what? Tan theta and the acceleration of the system is g tan theta oh. but we have been asked to calculate the value of f such that the block will remain stationary so we know the value of a now we can also recognize that in this case this is mg cosine theta because this angle is theta and this is mg sine theta there is friction up along the plane for the block to remain stationary it means that f of s must balance mg sine theta which implies that mg sine theta is mu s mg cosine theta in which case in which case mu s will be equal to what the tangent of theta so we can re-express a this implies that the acceleration a will be mu s g but that still does not give us f if this block remains stationary it means that f is equal to 5m multiplied by a which is just gonna be 5m multiplied by what mu s g this will be 5m g mu s and that is the value for f some other people may prefer to express f to be equal to 5m g tan theta Personally, I really don't care. I just want you to be able to know the procedure. We have the last example. And the question is, we need to calculate the acceleration of the system and the tension in the string. Please, get working. Start by drawing the free body diagram. The first thing we, we have to do is draw our free body diagram. That is MG and that is T. And that is T. So this object accelerates upwards and this object accelerates downwards. We are taking our direction of motion to be what? Positive. Okay? So for block 1, M1, we have T 
minus mg is equal to ma for block 2 we have 3 mg minus t equals to 3 ma if we add up the two equations the t will cancel we'll have 3 mg minus mg equal to what 4 ma and therefore this will be 2 mg equal to what 4 ma the m's can go away and A is just half of G. This would mean that T, which is equal to MG plus MA, will be equal to MG plus half MG, which will be given by our 3 over 2 MG, and that is the value for T. Um, thank you for your time, and see you guys on Tuesday and get ready for your test.